she's one of those people where I shouldn't even say what she does. I should say what she doesn't do because she's doing, if you go to her page, if you go to her link tree, her website, which I recommend you do, Taylor.com, you can find all of her links, all her resources. She's a recording artist. She has music. She's a minister. She preaches. She's a writer. She does podcasts. She has a massive TikTok page where she's reaching people with the gospel. She hosts revival and deliverance events, and she has a very powerful YouTube channel that's highly underrated. So I've linked her YouTube channel in the description. My biggest platform is YouTube. I'd love for all of you watching on the replay, all of you listening on Spotify right now, to go ahead and subscribe to her YouTube channel. That's gonna help us out tremendously. Okay, without further ado, episode 142 of Revival Lifestyle Podcast. Please help me welcome on my guest, Taylor Scroggins. Here we go. Taylor, how are you? Hey, I'm doing so good. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to have you on. I just want to say before we get started that I honor you. I honor your ministry. I love what God is doing with you, with your husband, with the online media stuff you guys are doing, just reaching so many people. My dad texted me today and said, hey, I follow her on TikTok. My little sister said, I follow her on TikTok. And so my family's following, my friends are following. You're exposing darkness. You're exposing the new age movement. You're exposing uh, uh, media and the agenda of Taylor Swift. And I've seen all your videos you do, and I know you get a lot of pushback, but you are pushing back darkness. I love the deliverance events you're doing. I'm cheering you on. I'm in your corner rooting you on. And so I'm honored to have you on. I really appreciate you being on all the people you've told about my ministry. I just want to tell you, I thank you and appreciate you and your husband. You guys are awesome. And it's going to be a great night tonight. Thank you so much. Yeah. I mean, it's mutual. I, I love what you're doing. I love the ministry. I'm very honored to be here. So thank you for having me. Absolutely. So I'd love to, I know you're new on the channel. Hopefully it won't be your last time on the podcast, but every time we have someone on for the first time, I'd love to just spend tonight talking about your testimony. I know you have a strong testimony of coming out of the new age. So feel free to take your time, how you were raised, what you got into, how God delivered you and brought you out. I haven't heard much of it, so it's, it's going to be fresh and new for me tonight, but I'd just love for you to feel free to share your testimony and just give you that platform. Yeah. If you have anything you want to interject on too, like there's a lot of twists and turns and things like that. So okay, feel free awesome. to interrupt whenever. Um, so I grew up um, Pentecostal, non-denominational, charismatic, whatever you want to call it. So people are kind of shocked when they find out that I had a past in the new age. Um, so my parents were Christian. They raised me Christian. We were in church pretty much every Sunday um, growing up and I didn't really have an encounter with Jesus until I was about 14 years old. I was a freshman, um, in high school. And if anybody, you know, in the charismatic or, or, uh, non-denominational remembers acquire the fire ATF, yes, like way back. I went to yes. those. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So I was at an acquire the fire conference, um, with my youth group and I had been struggling with anorexia for about a year. I had mm. a really bad eating disorder. I was starving myself. Um, I think I weighed like 94 pounds, just like wow. tiny. Um, and we were just at acquire the fire. We're at this conference and really powerful worship. And I remember I just lifted my hands during worship and I was like, God, if you love me this much, like everybody says you do, if you're really this powerful, if you, you know, can heal sick people and raise the dead, I don't want this eating disorder. Just take it away from me. I didn't know anything about deliverance. I didn't know it was a spirit, but it just felt like huge bricks were lifted off of me wow. in that moment. And I, I was free. Like Jesus delivered me in that moment. And I never had any kind of eating disorder ever again. And so yeah, my first encounter with the Lord was deliverance. And I think it's so funny that that's one of the areas where he's really um, using me right now, like really highlighting this ministry to help uh, see people get set free. Um, and so after that, I was on fire for God. I got water baptized and then I, and then we came home and then my mom and my grandma and like the women in my family, like laid hands on me. I received the Holy spirit. I started speaking in tongues and I was like, I went back to school. I'm like laying hands on people in the hallway, like kids wow. with like arm braces. I'm like sharing the gospel with my teachers. Like my teachers would come up to me and ask me for prayer. Like I was so on fire. And right after that, um, my school um, basically told us that we had to sign up for like yoga or PE class. And I didn't really know anything about yoga. I saw like celebrities did it and it looked really cool and it was in movies. And I was like, oh, that sounds better than like running around sweaty in gym class. And so I signed up for yoga. And even though I grew up in a Christian home, my parents didn't really know anything about the new age. I knew like witchcraft 
like spells and things like that and like Ouija boards. I knew that was wrong, but I didn't really know anything or was taught anything about astrology or yoga or the new age things. Um, And so no one said anything. Like my parents knew I was signed up for the class. And I just remember like being in that class and the teacher would literally chant like Hindu scriptures over us, like worship chants in like in high school, just a regular class um, chanting like worship to gods and goddesses, which are demons. They're not even gods and goddesses. And I remember whenever she would do that, I would like, like, this is weird. And I would pray in the spirit under my breath because I felt uncomfortable and I should have gotten out of there. But for whatever reason, I was ignorant and I didn't. And so then shortly after that, my dad comes home one day with an astrology textbook, like this huge big book about astrology. And he's like enamored by this book. And he's like, this is so accurate. It's amazing. And he's pulling up all of my horoscope stuff and showing it to me. And I was like, how? I was like, okay, this is accurate. But like, I thought God made all of our personalities and our future. I was like, how does this work? And he was like, well, I think that this is a system that God created, like to bring Mm. order. And, you know, it's coming from your dad. And I, you know, you trust your parents. And I'm like, okay, well, if God created it, then there's nothing wrong with it. And that's what a lot of new agers believe that these practices are okay or even holy or created or instituted by God. And so after that, I became obsessed with astrology. It was my entire worldview. I would just look at somebody and the first thing I would want to know is like, what's your sign? I want to know your personality. I want to know what you're like. I want to know if we're compatible. And the Bible no longer was my worldview anymore. And it was just out of ignorance because honestly, Isaiah, if someone told me that that was demonic, I would have dropped it in a second. And wow. my my youth leaders knew, my the worship leaders knew. I was like serving in church and it was just ignorance. Nobody warned me. Nobody told me. And I was just telling everybody at church, at school about these practices that I was doing because I literally had no idea that they were demonic, that they were wow. witchcraft. Yeah. And so um, I was an astrologer all throughout high school. And I was, I mean, I never saw like open heaven over my life. I would, I would pray for people sometimes and the Lord would heal them. Or sometimes I would hear from God, but it's such a, it was a huge difference before and after I left those practices because you know, I, I believed in Jesus and I loved him, but I literally had one foot in witchcraft and one foot in the world. And I say wow. witchcraft because the new age is, is witchcraft. Um, people don't want to call it what it is, but it, it's so demonic. All of the power, all of the teachings comes from the devil. Um, and so this is all high school and I'm three, four years in, and then I start college and around college, um, I started praying about the future and really God, what do you want for my future? I had all of these dreams to do music and to do ministry and things started to come together and then it just fell apart. Um, and looking back, you know, the Lord was in that because I wasn't ready. I was just a kid, but I was angry. I got angry at God. I was like, God, why are you, you know, my dreams are so close and then you're taking them away. I believe the lie that God was holding out on me. And I was just listening to the whispers of the devil in my ear, like telling me that God wasn't good, that he didn't love me. And my parents weren't, you know, supporting of that. And I, I needed all of the time to get into the word and study. And I wasn't ready to just go and start a job at that age. And I needed to get to know the Lord more. Um, but I, I got so angry and so rebellious. And First Samuel 15, 23 says, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Mm. It's as a sin of divination. And so as I already was doing divination, I was already trying to foretell my future using astrology. And so then I got into rebellion against the Lord and against my parents because I was angry. And so I started college right at this time and all of the friends I made, all they wanted to do was like party, get drunk every weekend, smoke pot, drugs, everything. And I was like, well, I'll hang out with them because they're really fun, but I'm just not going to do any of that. Yeah. Yeah. No, (laughs) doesn't work that way. And so uh, I started getting drunk every weekend, partying with them every weekend, um, smoking weed. Like I was just living a complete party lifestyle and as I was living in that rebellion, my appetite for the new age witchcraft grew more and more. Mm. And 
looking back now that I know the word, I'm like, well, yeah, rebellion and witchcraft, they go hand in hand. And, you know, when we do deliverance too, like if there's a spirit of witchcraft, you usually have to cast out rebellion or vice versa. Like those spirits are always together pretty much. So, um, yeah, I mean, astrology readings, I was doing divination charts, I was doing charts for other people. I was into crystals, meditation, demonic meditation. I tried to open my third eye. I was trying to see auras. I was calling psychics. I believe that I had past lives. I was trying to figure out what my past lives were. Mm. I was into numerology. You were fully in it. Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't do um, like the Ouija boards and spells because I was taught from a young age that was bad. But all of these things that culture thinks is like cute that they want to like package it up in a bow and sell it to you. I just I just like took the bait of the devil. I thought that I was some kind of clairvoyant psychic be- just because I was spiritually sensitive because I, you know, I could feel um you know, the demonic or the Holy Spirit. I'm like, well, maybe I'm a clairvoyant. Maybe I'm a psychic because I can pick up on energies like no. Mm. Um, And so through smoking weed, a spirit of anxiety entered me and I was severely, I had crippling anxiety. I've never dealt with that in my life. I was always so laid back and chill and I would get panic attacks every day through living that lifestyle of, you know, partying and rebellion um, a spirit of depression entered me. Um, I just didn't want to live anymore. I remember I was just driving down the street and I would have these thoughts. Like I wouldn't even care if a car crashed into me right now, because I don't care if I live or die. I'm so empty. And I believe it was because I had experienced the presence of God and I knew him and I had the Holy spirit. And Mm. then I walked away and that emptiness is, is worse than just being empty your whole life and not knowing better. I had the best of the best, like the prodigal son and I traded it for wow. like living with the pigs and I was in that oh my gosh yeah I would I remember I would just cry for hours and hours each day and I just like feel the Holy Spirit like there's some of you who are watching right now that you're deep in depression like you just spend hours and hours crying every day you have panic attacks every day and God wants to set you free and that's yes. where I was and so um one day and my mom and my grandma they had been praying and interceding for me this whole year of my freshman year of uh, college, they were praying. And I would just tell my mom, like, take me to a doctor, put me on meds, like medicate me, do something. And she's like, Taylor, you need to go to church. She, she knew that my problem was spiritual. And she knew that like of a, 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 a answer in the natural realm wouldn't have fixed it. I'm not against mm. those things, but like my mom could see in the spirit that I was dealing with demons. She knew it. And she was like, you need deliverance. I'm not going to put you on medicine, like go to church. Did you ever, did course, you ever know when you were in that, that this might've been a demon? Like, was it even in your mind that maybe I let a demon or, you know, they would say in the new age, like a negative entity enter into my life, or you just thought this just is normal. That spirit had so much control over my mind that whenever my mom would bring up, go to church, I would just manifest. Like I would just cry Mm. and get angry and be like, no, I'm depressed. Like I don't have a demon. Like I was totally under the influence of that spirit of depression and, and despair and death really. Um, yeah. And so not long after that, um, she really started pushing me to go to church. Cause I was really, I was at a point where I was so bad. I was like, medicate me. So Um, I think their prayers really intensified. And then one day my mom and then our family friend, she's a prophetess. She was at our house too. We were just all there. And she just looked at me. Um, my mom's name is Diane and the prophetess, her name is Sandra. And Sandra just looked at me and she was like, today is the day of your freedom. And I was like, what does that mean? And she's like, we're going to do your deliverance. And I was so at my rock bottom. I was like, just take me into the room, do whatever you want to do to me. I can't live like this anymore. I was just desperate and undignified. And we went into my bedroom and she started ministering deliverance. And, um, it wasn't, I mean, she was just having me like, you know, take really deep breaths in and just push out, like expel the despair, the depression, um, all of that. And then the anxiety, and I was completely delivered and set free from wow. all of that, everything, everything. Um, it was incredible. And so, I mean, that day, like it lifted and it was a spirit and I'm literally, it's been over six years. I've been totally set free and that stuff has never come back. Um, wow. deliverance is real. Yeah, it works. It's for today. 
That's so amazing. And what do you think about parents? A lot of parents watching this, they are clueless about the new age. They have kids as you're sharing that are involved in astrology and Enneagrams and yoga and psychic readings. And they're just so obsessed with this supernatural power. What would you say to parents that are watching? Were your parents like super involved knowing what you're going through? Were you hiding it from them? Because I think a lot of parents are afraid to ask their kids or check out what their kids are doing or look at what their kids are interested in. And a lot of parents are just ignorant that this stuff is demonic, that the devil is working overtime to infiltrate our lives through the new age movement. This is a, a, by the way, guys, a massively growing movement. Like as we do these videos, you might say, well, it's a little excessive. You guys are always talking about this. This movement is massively growing right now. Young people by the millions are getting involved in the new age movement. We'll talk about more later what the new age movement is, but what would you say to some of the parents that are watching that are like, just completely clueless to all this. I remember last time I did a video on the new age, a bunch of pastors were writing me saying like, we didn't even know people do this stuff. We didn't even know what none of this was. And then the pastors that were writing me started finding out our church members are doing yoga. Our church members are studying astrology. Our church members are doing angel yes. cards and tarot cards. And a lot of Christians are now going to mediums instead of going to God. It's like Saul, when Saul didn't have an encounter and, and the Bible says he, didn't, he couldn't hear from the Lord, he looked for a witch of Endor and called the witch of Endor because he wasn't having an experience. A lot of Christians right now, Taylor, you know, because they're not spending time in the secret place, they're not willing to spend time in prayer and fasting. They're not experiencing God. So they're running to the counterfeit new age movement, which is witchcraft and demonic. What are your thoughts mm -hmm. on some of these young people like, like you were getting involved in this stuff? Yeah. Um, second Corinthians two eleven says, don't be unaware of the, the devil's schemes. And so mm. I think that parents and as believers, I think we should equip ourselves. Don't go and like study from a witch or anything, but mm. educate yourself. Watch Isaiah's live streams, watch Jenny Weaver's live streams, watch from a Christian perspective and let this stuff be exposed and learn about it. That way, when you can see, when you see your friends living in that lifestyle, your kids, people in your church, you can lovingly point out, hey, you, you could send them a video or you can talk to them and say, you know, this is demonic. Astrology is divination. Yoga is worshiping Hindu gods and goddesses, which are demons. This stuff is not for the children of God. I think we need to educate ourselves because if somebody told me way back that all of the things I was doing was demonic, I would have wow. stopped. I would have, I would have stopped everything. I wouldn't have wanted anything to do with it. That's powerful. And I think what also I want to just emphasize on is you led a spirit of anxiety and depression, death. People don't realize when you dabble in this stuff, you're opening up a supernatural door. You're literally opening yeah. up a supernatural door in your life. Matthew 12 clearly states that we are houses that, well, demons call us houses. We could have the Holy Spirit living in us. We could have demons living in us. Things want to inhabit us. The same way yeah. God wants to fill you with his spirit, the devil wants to fill you with his spirits. So like the devil's looking to do what God's trying to do. God wants all of you. The devil wants all of you. God is jealous for your time. The devil's jealous for your time. God wants you to praise him. The devil wants you to praise him. God wants you to worship him. The devil wants you to worship him. God wants you to sacrifice. The devil wants you to sacrifice. And many people watching this don't realize when you open that door, and I tell people this all the time, you don't get to choose what spirits come in. You don't get to choose, oh, I only want a spirit of perversion, but I don't want a spirit of anger or bitterness or death or suicide. So you're really gambling. When you're involved in this new age movement, when you're doing tarot cards, yoga, whatever it could be, rebellion, you're opening up these doors. Pornography is a massive open door and you're letting these spirits in and you don't know what spirit it might be. You don't know what spirit yeah. could take over you. I had a friend whose dad had a spirit of war. And literally wow. his dad, who was involved in church at the church all the time, a church that didn't believe in deliverance, his dad literally tortured him and his brothers his entire life. And then years went by. Wow. The mom basically said, I have to leave you. I mean, he literally would torture his kids. And then he went to a church that did deliverance. And sure enough, a spirit of war, literally W-A-R, war manifested. His dad got fully delivered. But these things are happening right now in, our, in people's lives and people don't realize when they open up that door in the new age movement, they're opening up the door to demons. So I think the danger is unprecedented. I think that we can't overstate how dangerous getting involved in the occult is. And that's really what all this is. This is occult practices. This is straight up birthed in hell. This is the devil's yeah. counterfeit version of Christianity. And there's a lot of people uh, involved in it. So here you are now 
want to get back to your testimony. You get delivered. Now you're delivered. Did you just immediately say, I'm throwing out my stuff? Like, where were you at now that you've gone through this deliverance? And was it hard to go through this deliverance? Because um, did you feel like you were willing? Were you not willing? Tell us a little bit more about that after your deliverance and during. So, so God really started to set me and my family free um, around, this is around 2017. Like I'm, I'm getting delivered and uh, still nobody was like, Hey, astrology and new age is bad. So pretty mm. much I got delivered from everything I let in through like party lifestyle. Um, and so, but I'm on this path, like I'm, I'm searching for the Lord with my whole heart. I'm going to church again. Um, I stopped partying and, and all of that. And so um, one day uh, I was reading I, the last day I did astrology. I was reading um, my my birth chart, which is just this chart that you you know it's supposed to tell you everything about your life, your past, and your future. And I was reading that it said that I was going to get a divorce, that I was going to marry like some random person of a different. It's not even like the person I married. It's some oh you're going to marry a Taurus or whatever. It said that I was prone to head trauma and head tumors. And all so this demonic crazy. stuff. Oh. People don't understand when you come into agreement with your zodiac sign or all of the signs, you're literally come coming into agreement with curses. It literally said you're going to get a divorce. You're going to have head tumors. You're going to get this kind of cancer. It has that for every single person. Your own cocktail, craft cocktail of just mm. curses, literally specifically tailored to you when you come into agreement. And so I was reading all of that and I was like, there is no way this is from the Lord. I was like, this is demonic. These are curses. It was just the scales fell off of my eyes in that moment. And I just saw it for what it was. And then the next day or very soon after, it was a few years ago, my mom sends me this deliverance from astrology prayer that she just happened to find, just stumbled across the internet. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And she's like, I think this stuff is demonic. I'm like, I think so too. Like I, I read some really disturbing stuff the other day. And so my whole family prays this deliverance prayer. We all like get set free. So at this point, I'm starting to like figure out, oh, putting two and two together, like this is not of the Lord. And then after that, my dad just happens to stumble upon Derek Prince teachings about witchcraft and everything. Mm. And so and I love how the Lord redeemed the story because he was the, my dad brought the occult into the home, but then the Lord used him to bring Come deliverance on. and sound teaching into Come the home. On, and Rise so, up. yes, like fathers, you're so needed. The influence on the home, like it can't be stressed enough. And so then I started really learning about deliverance and it, it just answered all the questions I had my whole life. Well, where does this power come from? Why is going to a psychic wrong? Why, Like all these questions I always had. There was a generational curse of witchcraft in my family. My great, great grandma in Mexico was like the town witch doctor. And, and so from a young age, my mom was like, stay away from witchcraft. And me and my younger sister were so curious about it. And no one could ever answer our questions. And so getting into like this teaching and and how these occult tools work, like why tarot cards are demonic, why coming into agreement with astrology is demonic. It just, everything just made sense. And I had this whole new level of clarity. I had been delivered and set free. And I just like sat and studied the word for years. Um, and then I just started wanting to share my testimony. And I started making TikTok videos and sharing what God had done and praying for deliverance before um, before I was even doing social media, I would go around in the college dorms because I was still in college when the transformation happened. Okay. And I remember we'd like go into dorms and like cast demons out of people and pray for people and see like, amazing miracles wow. um and then and then you know later on uh finding you guys' videos you know the demon slayers and then i'm like you can do deliverance online like this is Come sick on. like i was just doing it in people's houses in the college dorms and so um and then that really inspired me to uh take everything online and so many people have been reached that's so amazing and you're doing deliverance events you're out at festivals we'll talk about in a little bit interviewing people witnessing to people you're just on fire and so one thing i love about your testimony is a lot of people they come out of the new age movement but they've never been to church they don't know god they're just straight out you were and this sounds so so crazy how god brought you out but you are serving god and mixing in the new age and that's something yeah. i really want to talk about tonight because once again, I'm very passionate about this. As a leader in the body of Christ, I'm seeing 
preachers now i'm not going to start going into too much detail because i've done so many lives on this and hours of talking about this but they're starting to mix in almost like what you came out of they're mixing in new mm -hmm. age practices into orthodox christianity and so now we're literally taylor teaching people here's how you open your third eye these are in christian churches and my mind is like how are we allowing this right and we're, we're bringing yeah. people into this this hybrid mixed like a mutated version of Christianity in the body of Christ and we're mixing in this poison to the body of Christ and now people are starting to think oh it's normal to go before the throne get an angel tell me this and, and uh, there's a new trend happening in the prophetic movement where it's like angels an angel told me an angel told me and I'm just I'm yeah. leery I know angels can speak to us I've done videos on angels Hebrews chapter 1 they're ministering servants but I'm very leery that when you look at all most cults they started with a revelation from an angel. Now you yeah. have Christians being taught it's okay to get new revelations. And it's not. It's not okay to get new revelations that are against the Bible because right. an angel came to you and showed you. So it's very yeah. alarming what I'm seeing happening in the body of Christ with new age, with churches opening up yoga studios. I'm like, how are you having yoga mm. at church and then you're having service the next day? And so we're seeing yeah. a lot of the new age you know, like what you dealt with bleed into. So it's so necessary that we're doing what we're doing tonight, that we're talking about exposing the new age movement, pushing yes. back on the darkness. What are some of your thoughts? Are you seeing some of this as well of a little mixture here and there? And it's not major yet, but a little mixture. Once we allow that, then the floodgates are open. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, we, we can't mix it, you know? Um, and, and for people who are in the new age or messing with this stuff, when I was, it's really easy to forget that God is holy and he doesn't mm. tolerate sin. Holy is in his name. He's the Holy Spirit. He's set apart. There's no evil in him. He doesn't tolerate sin. He is set apart from all other spirits. Um, and so, you know, when you start messing with the occult, with the new age, you begin letting in other spirits, mm. um, you know, and it's just, it's just so dangerous. You know, the more room we give our heart over to the occult, the less room we're giving our hearts to Jesus yes. and it bleeds over. Like you said, it contaminates like the Enneagram. This is probably one of the worst I've seen. Um, most churches or a lot of churches are even teaching. They're doing sermons literally crafted around the Enneagram, like teaching you this is your personality. Oh. And they don't even know the founders were literally channeling demons and writing, getting revelation from demons, automatic writing. They had no yep. control over their hands and just channeling spirits. This is your personality. This is your, it's the same thing as astrology. It's coming into agreement with a demonic identity. And so it's just, where does the line end? Because you both will get you spiritual results, but if, and if you're not intimate with the Holy spirit, you're not going to be able to discern holy tongues and demonic tongues because mm -hmm. you don't know him. You just hear someone. And so it's kind of like the analogy of the, the frog in the pot or whatever it is. Like the, you put a frog in like lukewarm water and you just slowly turn it up yes. and then they're, they're boiling alive. And when you're lukewarm, you're not spending time with the Holy spirit that, that, seduction that demonic false teaching it'll just slowly turn up turn up and then before you know it your church is completely operating under a demonic anointing instead of the holy spirit that's so good and i think a lot of times pastors are afraid to speak out against this stuff but guys we yeah. need to be speaking out if, if i'm not mistaken you recently did a video was it on taylor swift talking about some of the demonic practices and i saw you got a lot of backlash and it's crazy to me my mind is blown how christians will defend Taylor Swift over the word of God. Like you'll show clear demonic things happening and then Christians rise up. I know all the ladies are like, no, don't talk about Taylor <laughs> Swift. I'm not allowed to listen. Guys, you have to understand these are open doors. Entertainment, you're literally letting things enter you yes. when you open yourself up to the music, to the culture. Um, talk a little bit about that. You've been exposing culture. You've been talking against some of the stuff with Taylor Swift and some of the stuff happening in Hollywood. What made you want to make these videos? What motivated you to expose some of this stuff? Was it because of your testimony or what really, what fueled you to do some of these videos? Yeah, definitely because of my testimony. And um, I was really, really obsessed with Taylor Swift. So that's and talking to some of my friends who are Christians who used to be obsessed with her, too. Um, we were just kind of, you know, having casual conversations, like having coffee and be like, you know, I was really obsessed with her, too. And while I listened to her music, you know, one of my friends was saying I was I was fantasizing about other men. Wow. I had like dreams about leaving my partner. Um some uh, a lot of people were saying like they had 
uh, issues, like even in their reproductive organs, because when you let in sexual spirits, a lot of times people get um, spiritual spouses, you get tormented in your dreams. And then like when, when you do deliverance, I'm sure you've seen this too. Like people will literally um, have cysts in their ovaries, like disappear yeah. after getting deliverance or yep. endometriosis will be healed. Like there's literal stuff like that, that happens when you let in these sexual and impure spirits. And so heard a lot of stories about that. Um, for me, it just made it, it had this like always, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I would always have flashbacks of like really sad or really depressing or really heartbreaking times, but it was like, I was addicted to it. Mm. And all I could think about was that verse. That's like you foolish Galatians who has bewitched you, you know, it was like, literally being under an enchantment if you're so obsessed with an artist or a celebrity or a singer or a genre of music or movies that you cannot stop even though the lord is asking you to stop you've been bewitched you're under a spell that's not normal that's demonic and you need to give that up because it's an idol and so that really um that pushes me to do some of these videos because you know some people say like that's just for clicks you know you talk about celebrities and you just get more views but it's not true the what I found, especially on TikTok, is when I talk about Vanessa Hudgens is doing a witchcraft documentary, and that will catch a young person's attention. And then I, you hook them with that, and then you say, "Here's what the Bible actually says so about good. witchcraft. This is why you shouldn't do it. This is God. What God has for you is so much better." And then that video will get a million plays because you're talking about someone that they know. But then you introduce Jesus, and Come we've on. seen thousands of young people give their lives to the Lord, and so. I want to, I just want to encourage you guys be creative and find creative ways to bring the gospel. Um, and you know, you mentioned how we go to festivals or events and evangelize. Um, you can really use these things, these hot topics to have conversations and plant seeds and introduce the Lord when you're talking about the occult. So good. And I saw recently you had a video, I believe on YouTube of interviewing a girl and she was like, yeah, I'm doing readings. I'm a Christian. And then by the end, she was like, yeah, I need, to, I need to get back <laughs> in church. I need to repent. It was just her whole yeah. mindset changed, but the fact that you were able to give that testimony, have that conversation, and you're willing to go out there, because it's not easy at all to get behind a camera, get a microphone, and go talk to random people. Like, that's one of the hardest things to do. And so I love, and I want to make sure everyone checks out your channel as well with those videos, because I love that you're willing to do that. And I also want to touch on, you talk about this fast fascination or astonishment. I recently preached on, I believe it was Acts chapter 8, where Simon the Sorcerer was astonishing people. And people get yeah. this weird obsession when, when uh, let me use my words carefully here, because I'm, I'm about to make a lot of people mad, but guys, it's okay. Don't unsubscribe. You'll survive. People get a weird obsession when things have witchcraft attached to them. Because part of what witchcraft does is it allures you and makes you curious, and it brings you in in a weird, unhealthy way. And I started realizing this, and I'm going to say something, y'all. Just everybody relax. Take a deep breath before I say it. I started talking to guys, like grown men, that were uh, obsessed with Disneyland. And in my mind, I'm like, how could you be, and guys, just stay with me, how could you be a grown man and you go to Disneyland by yourself or you're a grown woman and you go, and I started hearing all these stories and all these people that are just like grown adults that are waiting 10 hours in line and they're, they're more obsessed than their children. And I started realizing there has to be something spiritual to this. How could a grown man who's a construction worker be obsessed with collecting little pins and buttons at Disneyland and all the characters? And I'm just like, there's a weird allure, a weird spell that get people get put under when it comes to you. Now, we already know, we've already seen what Disney does and how their mm-hmm. agenda, and we've exposed them a million times. They've exposed themselves. They leaked their own calls, right? So I don't have to get on here and say how demonic yeah. Disney is and all of that. We could just go watch their last five movies and you'll see demonic stuff. But it, yeah. it's just a testament to the, these entertainment things that are innocent, right? Like a Taylor Swift. Also, no, it's just Taylor Swift. I brought my daughter to the concert. You got to understand, though, you're putting her under that spell, that allure. Yeah. The, what, the reason yes. why these celebrities get to where they're at is because they are making deals with the devil. This is like completely proven. This is not conspiracy yeah. or back alley talk. They're making deals. The devil gives them supernatural power to draw people in yes. and people fall under that spell. And then it leads to so many other things. And so parents, you need to think You need to think twice about what you're doing with your kids, where you're taking them, what you're obsessed with. I wanna also just kinda like piggyback here, Taylor. Maybe for the new people, how would you describe, because we throw around the word new age movement a lot. We talk a lot about the new age movement, astrology and Enneagram, and we'll go a little deeper as we go tonight. But how would you describe to a person watching the new age movement? Like 
a lot of Christians like, what is the new age movement? Some people think it's just one thing. They think yoga is the new age movement, but in reality, it's not. Just give us a little bit of an intro for new people of what the new age movement really is. Yeah. So the new age movement is not anything new. It's ancient Eastern mysticism. A lot of mm. it comes from Hinduism. Um, the new age movement is really a hodgepodge of everything spiritual, honestly, that the Bible rejects. Come and on. they just kind of conglomerated into this. It's it's broad. It's very, you know, it, it really started rising in hippie culture. So if that gives you context, it's free. You can do whatever you want. Who cares? Just a little bit of witchcraft, a little bit of astrology, a little bit of yoga. And, you know, they market it like, oh, it's so free and easygoing. And there's a lot of allure about yoga and all of these things. And it's literally everything that the Bible says don't participate in this because it's straight up demonic. So past lives, reincarnations, yoga, meditation, astrology, third eye, crystals, divination, mediums, talking to the dead, um, energy, seeing auras. I mean, all Reiki healing, all of this stuff. Just, you know, the Bible says, don't go to mediums, don't go to psychics, shamans, don't worship idols, you know, don't partake of this stuff. And it's not because God is, you know, mean or a control freak he doesn't want us opening doors to demonic spirits and for me it let in depression anxiety a spirit of death so much darkness and confusion i remember when i was in this stuff it was literally like this thick fog of confusion was just always wow. over my brain at all times and i couldn't discern what was the holy spirit and what was new age what was from god what was not and i just remember constantly walking around in a fog of confusion and it was straight up totally demonic and so that's you know, really good. And I think yeah. people don't realize that the, the aim or the goal of the new age movement, if you look at like all the stuff you're talking about is to bring spiritual light enlightenment to raise your consciousness, to make you become your own God. Like the yeah. ultimately, if you look at like Buddhism, Hinduism, um, Gnosticism, mysticism, all the stuff that we're talking about, sorcery, it's ultimately mm -hmm. to become your own God, become your yeah. own idol, become your own object of worship to enlighten yourself above everybody else so you can become like God and then eventually actually become God. And this is a very dangerous thing. If you look at the book of Genesis, the snake said, if you eat this, you will be like God. You will yep. become God. You will be worshiped. But the crazy part is, God already made them in his image. God has already made us like him. And the new age movement is a counterfeit version to say you can be your yes. own God. And by being your own God. Now, the difference between Christianity is we become like God and we submit to God. And the more we submit, the more we become like him. We don't become him. Guys, please pay attention to what I'm saying. All the heresy hunters that are going to clip this. We don't become God, we become like God. That's why the Bible says we are, 2 Corinthians, ambassadors of Christ. And then the Bible says as if God is speaking through us, we are calling people back to him. So the New Age movement says you don't need God. You don't need yeah. anyone to tell you what to do. You don't need anyone to tell you how to live your life, what you can listen to, what you can watch, what you can do, who you can do, where you can go. You can become your own God. And the way you become your own God is using these occult practices to enlighten yourself, to advance in the astral realm or however you want to say it. And it's no different than what the snake did in Genesis. It's no different becoming like your own God. It's this idea of uniting all religions, all people, everyone's connected. There's this new school of thought. We don't need God. We reject God. Now, some, some practices in the new age movement do recognize Jesus as a God, but not yeah. the only God. It's not, he's not yeah. a way. And the, the new agers will say, well, we're universalists. So Jesus is a way to heaven or a way pathway to God, but he's not the way. The Christian says he's the only way. Jesus is the door. There's no one else yeah. but Jesus. And so there is this idea of enlightenment, um, ascension to become like God. And I think that's why a lot of people, Taylor, in the new age movement are finding Jesus. Jesus yeah. is what they've been looking for. Because if you look at New Agers, they're looking for spirituality. They're looking for love. They're yeah. looking for peace. They're looking for wholeness. They want to understand life and get value and get purpose and get meaning. And everything, and please hear me because there is New Agers in the chat, obviously. Everything you're looking for is found in Christ. You do not yeah. have to look to the New Age movement. You can find it in the person who created you. This is what you've yes. been looking for. People say, Isaiah, why don't you party? Why don't you drink? Why aren't you doing the things you used to do? And I tell them, I, because I found what I was looking for. 
I was involved in that stuff because I was searching. I spent 19 years looking for life and love in all the wrong places. And I'm telling every one of you, it is only found in Christ. When you sell it all, Matthew 13, 44 says the kingdom of heaven is like, like a treasure that a man discovers in a field. And in his excitement, he sells everything he has to buy the field. And imagine Taylor, when the man sells everything, people, his family are going, why are you giving everything up? Why are you throwing out your crystals? Why are you throwing out your astrology charts? Why are you getting rid of your tarot cards? But here's why you're excited because you know, they don't know, but you know, you found something that's infinitely better than tarot cards, yeah. infinitely better than drugs, than sex, than astral projection, than crystals, than yoga, whatever it is you're looking for meaning. The Bible says he sells everything to buy the field. And guys, what we're preaching to you tonight is buy the field, sell everything, get rid of yeah. all the cards. And I, I would challenge you guys tonight. I just feel the Holy Ghost strong tonight. I would challenge you tonight, get rid of everything get rid of everything get it all in the bag get your crystals get your cards yes. get your tarot card reading get your cards your angel cards your ouija boards put it all in a bag take it to the backyard and light it on fire don't sell it i i have someone i know that bought a crystal for almost fifty thousand dollars and she threw it away she said i'm not going to sell this crystal it's a massive green crystal super rare and she had it on her desk and they told her and she was she's very rich but they said if you put this on your desk it'll attract wealth to you and all this and she spent i think close to fifty thousand dollars and she threw it away we don't sell our idols we get rid of them and i really feel the holy spirit saying even as you're yes. sharing taylor people need to get rid of all of this stuff all these demonic yes. practices buy the field you can't buy the field if you don't sell it all you can't buy the yes. field if you don't get rid of it all. The Bible says the kingdom is like a merchant that's looking for pearls. And then finally, he finds the pearl he's been looking for and sells everything yes. to buy the pearl. It's this pearl of great price. It's the highest value. And so I want to challenge people. You've been searching. You've been looking in the New Age movement. All you New Agers in the chat. Maybe you're an ex-New Ager. This is what you've been looking for. There's freedom in Jesus. There's deliverance in Jesus. Those demons you have you can get free from, you can get delivered from. What would you say to somebody watching right now? Now, you've said a lot of good things because you said, Isaiah, if somebody would have told me what I'm doing is demonic, it would have been enough to get rid of all the stuff. But what would you say to a new age you're watching right now that's on the, on the fence? There's a guy in the chat right now that says, I'm an atheist, but I used to be a Christian. I want to find my way back to God. What would you say maybe to a new age you're watching this that really just needs to turn their life over to God? Yeah, I you know, for coming from experience, the new age movement is nothing but a hamster wheel. Mm. And it's, it's after your money, it's buy this crystal and everything will work out. We'll call this psychic or, well, the cleanse didn't work. So I need to do a new ritual bath or I need to buy sage. And it's just this never ending works and trying to make yourself good enough and trying to free yourself. And Jesus already paid the price for your freedom. He died on Come that cross on. for you 2000 years ago. He paid the price for our sin that we could never pay. We've all lied. We've all cheated. We've all stolen. We have all sinned and we've all lived in perfect life. And God came down to earth. He became a man in Jesus. And he said, I'm going to die for you, even if it was just you watching right now. And I'm going to pay the price for your sin with my own blood so that you can have eternal life. There's no other God that would do that for you. Mm. There's there's no other source. There's no other energy. The universe didn't die for you. Jesus Christ did. He is crazy about you. He's passionate about you. He is just all he wants is your heart. And so I would just encourage you, give your heart to God. And just like Isaiah said, everything you've been searching for, truth, enlightenment, love, freedom, you know, and I just feel the Holy Spirit. There's so many of you right now, especially if you've been dabbling in new age, you're being tormented at night. You're having yes. nightmares. You're having night terrors. Do you feel energies and evil spirits in your room? Calling on the name of Jesus and inviting the Holy Spirit into your home is what drives out all of the darkness. You don't need to go and buy a sage and buy a crystal and buy the power and the love of God is free. Jesus says, freely I've given to you, uh, freely you have received, freely give to others. And so God doesn't, he's not after your wallet. He's not after your money. Like these tarot card readers and these psychics, you can literally experience the love of God and freedom for nothing. Jesus paid it all. And all the Lord wants is your heart. He just wants to have a relationship with you. He's not after anything else, um, any weird ulterior motives or after, you know, tricking you into some religion, but Jesus loves you with a pure love and he just wants a relationship with you.
That's so good. I'm so grateful, Taylor, that you came out of the New Age movement and now you're doing deliverance. You're walking in signs and wonders. You're walking in the full gospel, the gifts of the Spirit. Why do you think so many? There's some big, big YouTubers. Of course, we won't be calling names and trying to throw shade at people, but there's some big YouTubers that have come out of the New Age movement and they seem to, a lot of them seem to go heavily into cessationism, which if you guys don't know, cessationism is the idea or the doctrine that the gifts of the Spirit supernatural power of the holy spirit no longer works through people so there's no more prophecy there's no more speaking in tongues there's no more words of knowledge there's no more casting up demons these things stopped with the apostles which is it's not biblical i would i wish i could no. tell you guys their argument but there's actually no scripture they have Nothing. at all there's no good argument for it but why do you think so many new agers get saved and then they just go heavily into what i would call just dry religion or they go heavily into um cessationism or reform theology where there's no power there's no anointing there's no holy spirit movement is it is it that they're afraid of being deceived again or what are some of your thoughts on on why we see that happening today yeah i think they're afraid to be deceived again i really mm. think that that's it they they dabbled into this demonic energy this the demons they dabbled into all that they let all this in a lot of them, um, some of them have had really dramatic deliverances and they get scared of what they let in and they don't want to mess with any more spiritual mm. things because they could have been, you know, felt traumatized by just, you know, <laughs> realizing what they had let into themselves, um, you know, and I just, I just, I wish I could tell every ex new ager who was a stationist that, you know, the devil, how could the devil give you spiritual power and God can't, it, it doesn't on. even make sense. So the devil Thank has you. power, but God doesn't, it, it just literally makes no logical sense. And they don't understand that the devil, all he can do is copy God creates and the devil copies. And so you have the gift of tongues and the devil says, well, I'm going to give you demonic tongues. You have mm. the gift of prophecy and the devil says, well, here, we're going to do divination for the gift of healing from the Holy Spirit, Reiki and witch doctors. He has no new tricks. And so just because you fell for the old trick, just go. The answer is in the Bible. <laughs> like it's literally in the scripture. Yes. Heal the, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, go into the earth, make disciples, preach the gospel with power. Um, you know, the fear isn't a fruit of the spirit. You know, if you're walking in fear of the Holy Spirit's power, just spend time with him because he's not scary. He just wants to give you gifts to empower you to preach the gospel. You know, the word of God says that the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. And when you start praying for people and they get healed, they're going to be like, I want that Jesus rather than if you just maybe just stood on this corner of the street shouting at them, you know, the, yeah. the works and the power of God is for his glory. And it's for evangelism. A lot of times to just have the lost see, um, the power of God. Yeah. I like what you said about how they believe in the, they believe in the power of the devil. I'm like, how did you go from being a psychic, reading tarot cards and all of that stuff? The devil, we want to make sure we're clear on this really does have power. So we're not saying it's all fake. It doesn't work. The reason why the new age movement is growing is because it does work. The readings yeah. are true, but they're from the wrong source. They're from the wrong source <laughs> and they speak death. They bring death. So it's, it's yeah. darkness woven into Oh, we're going to give you a nice reading and they're going to tell you oh in three months you're going to get in a car accident and you have to come back to me so i could put a spell to make sure you don't get in the car accident i need another 300 dollars. and the yep. crazy part is and i don't want to go deep in this but the mediums and psychics they will string you along they'll tell you if you give me another 300 i can do this if you give me another and now yep. we have pastors out here doing the same thing they're like well i need 300 dollars for you to get your miracle and pastors are way more expensive they say five thousand dollars to get your marriage or a thousand dollars to get your blessing that is all trash ladies and gentlemen that is not biblical that's not the way the new testament works the bible says god wants cheerful givers now it is biblical to sow into preachers paul said if i come preach to you i should be reaping physically if i'm sowing into you spiritually and then paul said pay traveling teachers especially well it is biblical support the ministry praise the lord i'm going to support taylor tonight financially i'm going to ask you guys for support but what we don't do is say your breakthrough is paywalled behind a five thousand dollar seed what we don't use manipulate people and say if you don't give you're not going to get your marriage or you're not going to get your breakthrough or that is false teaching that is manipulation that is witchcraft and so we see these parallels and then we see people now coming out of the new age afraid to get involved in spiritual things 
but it's like you had the counterfeit why would you now not want the real you've already tasted yeah. the counterfeit version why not have the real and so for me I look at the Bible, people say, what are you? I'm I'm full gospel. I'm non-denominational. I just, yes. I literally just believe everything. I'm not confused about nothing. I don't read and go, I don't really know about that. I go, okay, it's very, very simple. The disciples cast out demons. The disciples healed the sick. The disciples preached the gospel. The disciples evangelized. Uh, I think I'm a disciple. If I'm reading, Jesus says, come and be my disciple. And I want to be a disciple. And so if they did it as disciples, I should probably do it. And so I don't need to be a super apostle or a super prophet or an evangelist. I just read the Bible. And then I'm like, well, well, that after Jesus died, we don't need that. But then I go to the book of Acts and I say, oh, it kept happening. It is very simple. Yes. We don't need to complicate it. Cast out devils, heal the sick, preach the gospel. Those are the things Jesus sent the disciples to do, the Christians to do, and it's our call to do them as well. And so I'm so grateful, Taylor, for you that you've been a voice, an ex-New Ager, and I know, which we won't, you know, we're going to put names out again out there, but I know you've helped people that have reached out to me. They said, hey, I was very cessationist, very reformed, and Taylor helped me come out of that. And so I'm grateful that you're a voice that went to the Bible instead of went to religion and said, oh, God can't move anymore and God doesn't have power. One thing I do want to ask you about, though, I know we're almost an hour here, is yoga i know you were involved in yoga there's christians in the chat the one practice taylor that i always get pushed back on and ever makes everybody mad i know i have a lot of ladies that watch my stuff and um a large female audience but they get so mad when i talk about the dangers of yoga every time i talk about yoga they're fine with everything else they're like smash the yoga smash the ouija board smash the but don't talk about my yoga mat don't talk about my yoga. Uh, I love the yoga. So talk to us a little bit about what is yoga? Why is it dangerous? And why why should we not as Christians be practicing this? Yeah, yoga means to yoke. It means union. So you're literally yoking. And the Bible yoke means you're attaching something to yourself. You're yoking yourself to Hindu deities, to mm. demons that are worshipped in Eastern religions. Yoga was created to be a spiritual practice, not an exercise. It's a spiritual practice wow. that incorporates body movement. It's not, it's not exercise. If you go and you talk to any yogi, any professional, any yoga teacher, not like an Americanized one, but real ones, masters and gurus, they say, of course, yoga is a spiritual practice. It's, it's not exercise. So it's the research is all there. People don't want to, they don't want anyone to touch their idols. They like them. They're comfy. It's shiny. It makes you feel good. Um, but at the end of the day, do you love doing a stretch more than you love Jesus? Come I mean, on. it really boils down to that. I mean, I think it's really messed up if we can't do the research, look at something, compare it next to scripture and say, oh, you know what? This is wrong. I'm going to put it down because every pose, they do chants, they do poses and they do breath works. Some forms of yoga actually call out to these Hindu demons. Yes. One of them is Kundalini, where you actually ask this Kundalini spirit to enter you. And I've done deliverances where we've had to cast that spirit out and it's a nasty, vicious spirit. Mm. It's almost acts like a false Holy Spirit. It pretends to be a, a, a good voice to you. And all. I mean, it's just, it's evil. It's wicked. And so um, I had to get deliverance after I, I did yoga and, and most people, you know, everyone who practices yoga needs to get deliverance because every pose, every chant, you're calling these Hindu gods into your body. And if you don't believe me, you can do a Google search and find it out in like five minutes. It's it's all there. Yeah. People just are lazy. They don't want to do the research. I love what you said about it's not exercise. It's there is exercise involved, but it's not in first exercise. It's actually a spiritual practice. And these different mm -hmm. whatever double, triple dragon, double dog, backwards, whatever names you guys give these things, these are all <laughs> poses to Hindu gods. Like and like yeah. you said, you could you can do a five minute Google search. Christian yoga does not exist. Okay. No. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no such thing as Christian yoga. Now, some of you are like, well, I want to stretch, then go ahead and stretch. But why are you yeah. namaste and hand movements and gestures and I bow to the divine in you and all the spiritual practices you're doing with it? That is all demonic. It's all an open door. Even what you yeah. said about breath work, there's a, a big time guy who's like the number one, I guess he'd be, you know, like I am with deliverance. I'm like the guy on the internet. He's like the guy that does breath work and he's, you know, he blocked me. Someone sent me his page while well, he blocked me. I, I didn't know who he was, but he knew who I was apparently blocked me. I started looking at his YouTube channel. It is so demonic. It's so beyond demonic, this breath work. And they're literally teaching you to breathe in demons. I'm, I'm like, this is so obvious. And 
People are manifesting, screaming, and they're like, we're going to release your trauma. And they're putting their hand yeah, over their stomach I've and they're that. breathing deep. And the person's full on growling, foaming, manifesting. Yeah. And this guy is, I don't want, I don't want to tell you guys his name because I don't want you to go to look up his stuff because you don't need to watch it. We'll, we'll do the research for you. But this guy is literally invoking demons into people. And then when you talk about breathwork, people say, well, God made breathwork and God made crystals and God made marijuana. And yes, God made crystals, but he didn't say worship them, rub them and invoke demons. God made marijuana, but he also made poison ivy and he didn't, we're not smoking that, are we? So I think yeah. there's a lot of misconceptions about, well, God gave us breath and God made, you know, and they try to say, well, the third eye is the penal gland and all. We just twist it all up. We manipulate yeah. it, make it what we want to make it. But it is an open door. It is demonic. And you guys yeah. keep doing it. And then you guys come to us and we got to cast that thing and spend hours with you. Just stop inviting them in and we'll stop having to cast them out. So all this stuff with the breath work. Talk about uh, tarot cards and angel. Now, angel cards are newer. This is basically, and this is so crazy because we had a church service at my own church several months ago and people were in the parking lot doing angel card readings. And I'm like, y'all cannot what? be, we had to tell people you cannot be handing out angel cards. They're like, oh, we thought this was okay. So what it is, is it's basically tarot cards, but they're trying to make them like a Christian or a light version. So we had to tell people, no, you cannot hand out angel cards. It's the same thing. What are your thoughts on tarot cards? Did you get involved in any of that? And, and what are the dangers of that? No, I always knew that tarot cards were demonic because my mom told me that from a young age. But the way that they work is the tarot card readers, the way they can tell stuff about you is these psychics, tarot card readers, all of that stuff, the astrologers, they speak to demons. They literally channel spirits. And so the spirits, if you have demons or if there's a familiar spirit following you, they're literally just communicating with the demons. The demons are yes. telling them what to tell you. So that's how they can tell you this is what happened when you were six years old and you just got dumped by this guy and then you're crying and then you're, oh, give me the crystal that I need to buy. Like it's manipulation. It's witchcraft. They're literally just talking to demons to get all your information. And it's just a counterfeit. It's evil. It's wicked. And they'll say some good things to you, but then they'll literally send you on your way with spirits, with demons attached to you. You let in all this divination and then they'll speak curses over you too. Oh, I see in the future, you know, you're a really bad accident. Something's going to happen. You need to like buy this kind of sage and this and that. Like they literally speak curses over you. You receive it. You give that power in your life. You receive all their demons and all the junk they're giving to you. And then we want to act surprised when it comes to pass when you came mm -hmm. into agreement with a curse. So I always steered clear of those, but I did um, go to psychics and, and stuff like that. And the stuff that they said worked. And then later on, I found out why I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. Yeah. And then even with one misconception is people say like, well, why, why, why would a psychic or a witch doctor heal my body? And you guys got to realize, okay, if there's a demon giving you sickness, a spirit of infirmity, and that witch doctor is in tune with demons that witch doctor has the authority to use another demon to tell that demon to stop afflicting you you go home you're no longer sick mm -hmm. and now where do you think your faith is your faith is in the demonic realm your faith is in the witch doctor so it's the devil's plan to say yeah look i can heal you not realizing yeah you might have got healed or that infirmity might be on pause or uh, you know not afflicting you but you also now have anxiety depression suicide and a million yep. other demons so there yep. is and like we're saying, there is power. That's why it's so popular, but it is a counterfeit power. It's a demonic power. It's a supernatural power coming from demons. There are angels and then there are fallen angels. And so we, we cannot give way, not even an inch to these things, not even an ounce to these things. You know, a lot of Christians talk about karma and that's a, a Buddhist and a Hindu concept of whatever you do in this life, when you reincarnate in the next life, you'll be affected by what you do in this life. And Christians are like, well, yeah, I have karma, this and that. These are all new age things that are entering in the church. Now, the biblical <laughs> model would be you reap what you sow. If you sow bad seeds, you will reap a bad harvest. But karma is a Buddhist Hindu concept of reincarnation. And I had a Christian <laughs> recently like, I didn't know reincarnation wasn't biblical. I'm like, what Bible are you reading? <laughs> the Bible says it's appointed oh. for man to die once. Hebrews 9.27, just as a man is destined to die once and after to face judgment. So we have one life, one death, 
and then we we face judgment. You're not going to reincarnate as a butterfly. You're not coming back as a bald eagle. I'm sorry to tell you, when you see an animal that is not your, you know, grandma from a past life, this is no. all ungodly, it's unbiblical, and it's all yeah. new age practices that are happening. Um, what about the, the law of attraction, this idea that positive energy, positive vibes. Uh, if I do negative things, it'll bring negative things. If I do positive, if I, if I think about things and create source energy, did you have any involvement in that or any thoughts on like the law of attraction? Um, I, I used it with crystals. And so I just thought if I wear this crystal, then I'll, I had this, I'll tell you a, a quick demonic story. I had, <laughs> yeah. So I, I got dumped. I was really sad. I'm like researching. It's like, if you wear this pink crystal, you will attract love. I'm like, I need that. I, I order this crystal, this stupid, ugly little pink thing. I wear it around my neck. And then the next day, this this guy from one of my classes in college, or this has never happened to me before in my life. A random stranger walked up to me, very good looking and was like, hey, do you want to go out? Like the day after I got dumped, I'm wearing this crystal. I'm like, this really works. And the, wow. guy's, into the, the guy's into the new age stuff. And so- I, I do think that demons are attracted to demons, that birds mm. of a feather flock together. And so if you're messing with that stuff, I don't know about if I if I manifest this and get good energy, but if you're messing with the demonic, the people who are into that stuff, you will find each other. The devil brings people together, just like the people of God are attracted to the church, the people of God. We want to spend time with the Lord. But no, law of attraction is is demonic. It's stupid. It takes us away from prayer, honestly, at the end of the day, because you try to take it into your own hands. Well, I'm going to manifest this and I'm going to attract this instead of like the Bible says, submit your request, make your request known to God, submit to him through prayer and trust the Lord. Ask him for the things, for the desires of your heart and trust that everything is filtered through him when you're obedient and he's going to give you good things. And if the answer is no, then he has something better for you, but it, it takes it into our own hands and that's witchcraft because it's control. So good. What about the Christians that say, now, I obviously think this is, I'm like, this is so dumb to even say, but what do you think about the Christians that say, well, God made crystals? That's, that's what I always hear. You've probably heard that a million times. Like, well, God made yeah. crystals. Wouldn't they work? What, what is your thoughts or what do you tell people that say that? I tell people that there's nothing demonic about a rock or a leaf or a plant or a crystal. It's how you use that. What is your intention? What are you doing? If you just like a pretty rock, like I'm wearing my wedding ring, I'm wearing yeah. diamonds because I, I like it. It's beautiful. It's my represents my covenant with my husband, but I don't worship it. I don't pray. I don't put my wedding ring in the corner to attract good spirits and clean out bad things manipulation control you're trying to clear things out or if you're okay Derek prince says it really beautifully he says when you assign supernatural power to an inanimate object that's sorcery so if you mm. think this plant is a magical thing that'll cast a demon out that's wow. sorcery if you think wearing a pendant around your neck is going to give you enlightenment that's sorcery that's witchcraft and so you know i don't think there's anything evil about a rock but it becomes an idol and then you can fill things in the Old Testament when they had the idols. Um, they they believed that the spirit would actually enter into the idol. They believed the spirit of that God was in there, and it's no different from when you have a crystal and you think there's a spirit in there, keep attracting good things to you. It's modern day idolatry, and then you have all this stuff in your house, and you wonder why you're tormented at night or why you're, there's always fighting in your home because you're letting all these demons in. Mm, that's so good. So good. Yeah. And I think even what you talked about, you know, people are looking in, into astrology and horoscopes. They want to know about themselves. They want to know about yeah. my future, about my destiny. And the only person that knows all of that is God. And this is a basically the new age is a shortcut to instead of fasting, instead of praying, instead of seeking God, yeah. instead of submitting your life to God, you can just rub a little crystal or you can do a yoga pose or you can get an astrology chart or you can look at a horoscope and find your your destiny, your personality. And now I know someone did a video recently, like McDonald's was handing out horoscopes with every meal. It's like, it's becoming so popular. It's becoming wow. so mainstream. And this is absolute witchcraft. One thing I do want to touch on, this is probably the most, in my opinion, I could be wrong, the most accepted new age practice in the church. And that is the Enneagram. Guys, the Enneagram yeah. personality test, it sounds innocent, but it's absolutely demonic. I'm, I'm gonna just talk a little bit yeah. about it if you don't mind, Taylor. Just yeah. the the number, I won't do a whole teaching because I do have a video on the channel about this, but the, the Christian, this is under Christian books, if you look this up, the Christian book about the Enneagram, and years ago, 
the, the Enneagram was going through the church. Everyone was talking about it. Everyone was teaching on it. I'm a number three. I'm a number seven. I'm a number five, whatever. I'm thinking like, are we ordering at, at In-N-Out Burger? Or are we doing, I don't know what a number three is, a number four is, but everyone was talking about what number they were. And I started researching the Enneagram because I had family that was doing it. I had friends that were doing it. And I just realized it's basically horoscopes repackaged to be able to be sold to the masses. It's the same the same idea, it's created by an occultist, actually multiple occultists created the Enneagram. But I wanna show you guys, if you don't believe me, some quotes from the Christian Enneagram book, which is oxymoron. There's no such thing as the Christian Enneagram, but the guy who really made it mainstream in America and in, in the church, I just wanna give you guys some direct quotes from his book so you don't think I'm doctoring this up. And I want you to tell me in the chat, cause we have about 3000 of you on here on Facebook and YouTube. I want you guys to tell me in the chat if you think that this is okay for Christians. Because this guy is a Christian that made this book and wrote this book. These are direct quotes. He says this in page 49. Type isn't a uh, this, uh, he says a, a number type isn't a type of person, but a pathway to God. He says the Enneagram is a sacred map to our soul. Remember, this is a Christian book. This is in the church's being taught. The Enneagram is a blueprint for developing character that each of us carry through life, but one that we don't just discover or we don't just open up, it's a journey. Then he says this, if it's weirding you out a bit, that's okay. The Enneagram might not be for you, or this might not be the right time in your life to dig into it. In my experience, it seems like the Enneagram shows up at the right time. I'm like, oh, it's starting to sound alive here. Page 58, coming to terms with our type, and this is the Enneagram type, this is a rite of passage. The Enneagram is a sacred experience that should be owned by each one when you're ready for it. Without understanding the why behind the type, we sometimes can mistake our personality for essence, which is all new age talk, page 60. And I'm just giving you guys quotes directly from the book. He says, so it's worse than a party foul to type someone. It's an intrusion or an overreach. It's also an indication that someone doesn't understand the power and the potential that lies within the Enneagram. That's page 60 page 81 and this page is this chapter is titled how the enneagram found me this is what he says it was during the summer of 2000 in the slums of cambodia that the enneagram first found me but the enneagram is relentless once it finds you it doesn't let you go truth and light are like that so this is a christian book saying the enneagram is living it's alive it finds you and once it grabs onto you it doesn't let you go page 102 through 103 look at this quote the enneagram through its unbashed truth telling invites us to return to our essential nature the homes of our souls page 167 the enneagram won't let you go it won't let you sidestep it forces you to wake up page 241 I think I now understand why the Enneagram has been oral tradition for thousands of years to try to limit its dynamic mystery, its beauty, its force within the confines of a written page is a daunting task. So let's just recap here. I know I just said a lot and some of you are confused. I'm gonna wow. recap. The Enneagram forces you to wake up. It follows you and holds on to you. It's a sacred experience and a map to your soul. The Enneagram is an alive force. Once you find it, it won't let you go. And people w don't truly understand the power and potential. Now, those quotes, Taylor, are enough for me to say, nah, that's a bit sus. I don't want nothing to do with that. Sounds like a demon. That's a Christian book being taught in churches. The number one selling book on the Enneagram, which is in the Christian category on Amazon, is saying the Enneagram will reveal your source, reveal your essence. It's a map of liberation. It's uh, one page, page 73, he says, it's the root of every decision we make in life. It's the way to find yourself back home and it brings you back to God. That's page 73. This is wow. all what we're seeing right now. And I have a whole bunch of other quotes. I won't bore you guys, but these are new age things happening. And a lot of you go to your pastor and your pastor says, oh, it's no big deal. It's just a personality type. But when you start diving deep in the layers of this stuff, you'll start realizing that this stuff is demonic. This stuff is new age. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on these personality, horoscope, Enneagram, or, or these new age practices? Yeah, I, I, the more I've dug into these personality tests, Enneagram astrology, even the Myers-Briggs, Carl Jung was an occultist too. When the people do, I'm the ENTP or INTJ, you know, and, and as I've been researching it, I've just come to the conclusion that you're not a one size fits all version of a horoscope or a number. God created you uniquely. He created your gifts, your talents, your personalities, everything about you was custom made by God. And the devil wants so desperately to tell us who we are. He wants to influence your identity, whether it's through an Enneagram number or 
astrology, divination, if the devil can literally shape you into your personality, then who are you? And then when that personality gets taken away from you, then, you know, what, who are you? What do you have left to stand on? But get your identity from who God says you are from the word of God, from your personal relationship with God and stand on the rock of Jesus, our firm foundation. And you're never going to wonder who am I? And then we have such an identity crisis today. People thinking that I'm, I'm a non this and that, and I'm all the pronouns and everything. Um, and there's just such a lack of identity. And so as a culture, specifically like Gen Z, millennials and younger, there's such a lack of identity. And I just really want to sound the alarm on this and say, get your identity from God, because nothing else is going to tell you who you are. You can't even tell yourself who you are because you didn't create yourself. Come on. God created you. He created your heart. He created the plans for you. And so as you get to know your creator, you're going to discover who you are and also have eternal life and a best friend and Jesus mm. and everything amazing. So it just, that's my encouragement to you guys. So good. Taylor, I want us to pray for the people. I know there's people that need deliverance. I know there's people that need breakthrough. I'll have you pray just a prayer of breaking that new age spirit, calling people out of that and just God would touch them. Is there any final thoughts before? I want to make sure I give you the chance. If there's anything I missed, I know we kind of had a list of things we wanted to run through. We got through most of them. I know we're about an hour and 20 minutes in, so I want to honor you, respect your time and everything like that. But is there anything else you wanted to add to kind of conclude this? And then we're going to jump in and we'll pray for the people. No, you know, the only thing that I want to add is just search for the Lord. If you're searching and you're seeking, turn to Jesus, ask him to reveal himself to you, pray, put your hope um, in him. He's the only one that can save us, give us eternal life and salvation. And so we're going to pray for you now. And I pray many of you will make that leap, make that decision and say, you know what, all this stuff isn't working. I'm ready to try Jesus. I'm ready to get off the hamster wheel. So good. So why don't you pray for them, Taylor? And then um, after you pray, I'll pray for them. And we'll just, we'll pray for freedom, deliverance. Maybe those that want to get saved, you guys just right now is your time to repent. We're not going to lead you through some sinner's prayer. You can repent right now. You can turn as Taylor said, you know, I came as an atheist. I wasn't a new ager, but I was a, I was the weakest atheist out there, but I was a self-proclaimed. I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God, which was so dumb, but I came to the altar and said, God, I don't believe in you. I even cursed at God and God encountered me. God touched me. God changed my life. And I've never been the same. I can't live a moment without thinking about him. I'm obsessed with him. I'm addicted to him. I'm telling you guys, it's the best decision. Those of you that are in the chat that are atheists, new agers, I've been reading your guys' comments. I was where you were. Taylor was where you were. We were there before. You can get here. You can make it. You can serve God and be joyful. And you guys might look at us tonight and say, you guys are radiating. You guys have you know, your smile. There's a light on you. And it's not has nothing to do with physical looks. It has nothing to do with physical appearance. It has to do with the Holy Spirit, the light of God on us and the Holy Spirit on us. That's what gives us joy. That's what gives us purpose. It's not a marriage or kids or because we have big followings or, you know, uh, Taylor has a hit song. None of that is what makes us the way we are. It's the Holy Spirit living in us. If you see the glow, if you see the shine that we have, that's only the Holy Spirit. And you can have that. You don't have to be depressed. You don't have to be anxious. You don't have to be addicted. Taylor, I wish someone would have told me it's not normal to sleep in till two o'clock. It's not normal to be depressed. It's not normal to be anxious. And I just want to tell someone in the chat, it's not normal to have an eating disorder. It's not normal to cut your arm. It's not normal to starve yourself and to throw up after. Mm -hmm. And it's not normal to be addicted and to have to run to a bottle. Guys, drinking a handle of vodka before bed is not normal. It's not normal. Smoking three packs and two packs and smoking weed and I can't even sleep without smoking weed. I can't even get out of bed. Some of you are literally smoking to get out of bed. That's not the life God has for you. God has a life of joy and peace and wholeness and healing and happiness where you no longer have to do any of those things. That God can wash you tonight. God can cleanse you. God can encounter you. And we're believing for that. We both come spirit-filled, believing that the power of the Holy Spirit would touch your life. This is not just an hour podcast where we expose the devil and we talk. This is not talk. This is the power of God, the demonstration of the Holy Spirit wanting to touch your life. So as Taylor prays, as I pray, I just want you guys to be ready. Have your heart ready to encounter God. Right now, wherever you are in your car at work, there's thousands of you in here, all different places. And guess what? God can meet you in the grocery store. God can meet you in your car. Last night, Taylor, someone said, I had to pull over in my car because I was getting touched by the power of God during your live stream. And I was on the side of the freeway, crying, repenting, turning to God. So maybe you need to pull over into the grocery store parking lot right now. Let the presence and the power of God 
touch your life. God wants to encounter you. So go ahead, Taylor, pray for them. And then I'll jump in and pray for them after you. Yes, just just repent, like Isaiah said, just lay everything down, even just close your eyes and see yourself, whether it's your joint or your crystals or anything that you have, and just literally see yourself putting that at the foot of the cross right now. Just, just give it to the Lord. Holy Spirit, come. Jesus, come and touch every single person who is watching, who is listening right now, Father. I pray that you would just take them into an encounter with you, that your presence would just fill them from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. Give them a revelation of the cross. Give them a revelation of who you are, Lord. Meet them where they are, Father. Show them that there is a way out. And if you're watching, you can even just renounce right now. I renounce the new age. I renounce smoking. And just declare and begin to renounce. And we're going to pray and we're going to command all of those chains to break off of you in Jesus' name. So if you need to pause it and renounce, you can pause it and renounce. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you would just fill them. Fill them from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet with your love right now. And we just take authority over everything that was renounced, over every door that was just shut in Jesus mighty name. And we command all spirits to go right now in Jesus mighty name. Every spirit that came in through the occult go now in Jesus name. Every spirit of Python, every spirit of divination go right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every spirit of anxiety, heaviness, depression, death, suicide go right now. You loose them in Jesus mighty name. Everything that was renounced, every spirit attached must go right now in Jesus name. Lord, break off every Every chain, every hindrance, everything affecting the mind, causing yes. confusion, go right now. Break right now in Jesus' name. And Holy Spirit, touch their mind. Give them the mind of Christ, Lord. Break off every lying spirit, whispering to them, telling them they're too far gone, that they can't serve the Lord. I break that off of your ears right now in Jesus' mighty name. And we speak clarity for the Holy Spirit to renew your mind right now. We even speak creative miracles into the mind right now. Right now in Jesus mighty name Lord would you reconnect tissue that has been disconnected would you rearrange minds that have been scrambled and depressed and, and bound by um by mental illness father we just pray for healing over the entire mind and and soul and body in Jesus mighty name Lord and every last thing that was left at the cross that was renounced and the door was shut anything lingering anything hidden just go and leave them right now in Jesus mighty name and holy spirit come touch their hearts heal their hearts Fill them, Lord. And we even just pray against the nightmares in Jesus' name. Everything attacking them while they sleep, any sleep paralysis, any nightmares and night terrors to go from their life now. And we just speak sweet sleep and prophetic dreams and deliverance over you while you sleep in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We just pray, God, touch every single person listening. Touch our children, God. Touch our marriage. Bring deliverance. The Bible says when a demon comes out, it's the finger of God. It's the spirit of God. I just pray, Lord, that your finger would touch every single person, that every stubborn demon would have to leave in Jesus' name. You have no power. They are not your home. You must come up and out in Jesus' name. Not in my authority or my name, but in the name of Jesus Christ, every foul spirit must go now. Go now. You have no power. You have no legal right. We command you. The blood is against you, Satan. You've lost this battle. This person is not your home. Come up and out in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I pray, release your fire. Burn those demons out. Release your power. I pray, Lord, that you would do the heavy lifting tonight, that you would drive out these demons, every demon from yoga, from new age, from astral projecting, from seeing psychics and mediums. And some of you think you're a psychic. You think you're this, but the Holy Spirit wants to deliver you tonight. Depression, anxiety, suicide, bitterness, resentment, eating disorders, anorexia, bulimia, whatever it is, every foul spirit must go right now. Satan, get your hands off this generation. Get your hands off my family. Jezebel, get your hands off the throat of this generation. We rebuke you, Jezebel. You have no power. You have no authority. We are calling for the Jehus to rise up in this generation that are going to boldly come against that Jezebel spirit. Right now, the blood is against you, Satan. Go in Jesus' name. Go in Jesus' name. The blood is against you. Every spirit must go. Come on, some of you, if you're with your friends or family and they're manifesting, start doing deliverance on them right now. Start praying for them right now. I pray some of you that you'd be filled with the Holy Spirit. All you have to do is ask for the Holy Spirit and he'll fill you. 
Jesus said, if you being evil know how to give good gifts, how much more does the Heavenly Father want to give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? Ask for the Holy Spirit right now. Father, we're asking you, pour out your Holy Spirit. Encounter us, God. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Touch my life, Father. Fill me with your power. I need your Holy Spirit. I can't go on without you. Just ask him right now for the Holy Spirit to fill you. Holy Spirit, fill us. Holy Spirit, fill us right now in Jesus' name. Touch us right now in Jesus' name. And some of you are like, I don't know why I'm laughing. I'm telling you right now, please take it from us. We've done thousands of deliverances. It's a demon making you laugh. There is nothing funny about what we're doing. It's a demon manifesting out of you laughing, making a joke out of it, making light of it, making you think this is funny. If you think this is funny and you're you're laughing for no reason, it is a demon. And I command that demon, leave in Jesus' name. Every blaspheming, mocking spirit, if you're hearing curse words in your head right now, that is a demonic spirit. That demon must go in Jesus' name. Go now. Every foul, mocking spirit, go. Go. This is no joke. This is no game. You have to leave in Jesus' name. The blood is against you. I see many of you in the chat say you feel like throwing up. Get a bucket. Get a bowl. Get a bag. Let it out of you. Don't hold it in. If you feel like throwing up, Open up your mouth and let whatever comes out, come out. Acts chapter 8 yes. says they were screaming as demons left them. Some of you might start screaming. Some of you might be yawning, burping. You might feel something coming up. That's the demon coming up and your body's responding, okay? It's, it's a real thing. They live inside of us. So right now, go now. Go now in Jesus' name. You have no power. You have no authority. The blood is against you. Go now in Jesus' name. Every foul spirit. Guys, this is biblical. Some of you think this is crazy. You think this is nuts. You just haven't read the Bible. Go in the Bible and you'll see Jesus casting out demons everywhere he went. Right now, every foul spirit must go. You have no power. The blood is against you, Satan. The blood is against you, Satan. Go now in Jesus' name. Father, we pray, fill him with the Holy Spirit. Fill him with the Holy Spirit. Touch him with your power, Lord. Anoint them, God. Even the mockers, I pray in the chat. I was a mocker. I have compassion to you mocking because I was a mocker the night I went to church. I was mocking, joking, <laughs> making references, saying, oh, this is stupid, making jokes, and God met me. So you can mock all you want. You could laugh all you want, but God is going to meet you. God is going to encounter you. God has been pursuing you and chasing you. And the fact that you're still in this broadcast shows me that there's something here that you want. So you can mock all you want, but you're still here listening and God's going to meet you where you're at. God's going to touch you. So I pray, Lord, even the mockers tonight, you touch them, God. Even those that are yes. laughing and joking in the chat, I thank you, Lord, yes. that you're going to touch them tonight. You're going to deliver them tonight. That they're yes. broken. That They're mocking because they're broken. They're mocking because they're hurting. And Holy Spirit, you, you have compassion on them. That we're compassionate towards those that are broken, hurting, and mocking. So Father, we just pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes. Touch every single person in Jesus' yes. name. I, I just feel Lord. led by the Holy Spirit to pray one more thing. Yeah, I break off it. every generational curse of yes. witchcraft off of every person here right now. Every generational pattern and curse of divination, sorcery, witchcraft, false religions, Islam, New Age, um, anything of the sort, divorce, curses, illness. We break off every generational curse right now from the mother's side and the father's side all the way back to Adam and Eve. We put them under the blood of Jesus and everything crippling your family must break and go to the pit of hell now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. What an awesome time tonight. We're an hour and about 30 minutes in. Taylor, I hope to have you on again in the future. I know we won't announce it yet, but I know I asked you a while back to do a group podcast. So we'll be doing a group podcast together with some friends of ours about exposing the new age, talking about testimonies, deliverance. Thank you so much. Where else can they find you? Where can they see your stuff? I think if I'm not wrong, isn't it just Taylor.com? where they can yeah. find a lot of your info. <laughs> How did you get that domain? Yeah. I saw that today. I was like, wow, she has Taylor.com. So that not has a lot, lot of people. Of yeah. She not has, a lot of people have my name. There. Yeah. So yeah. where else is that the best place to, to send them to? Honestly, the best place to send you guys to is my Instagram and YouTube channel. My website is good too. Um, but yeah, YouTube and Instagram is where I'm the most active. Um, but it's Taylor official on everything. And then Taylor.com. It's T-A-I-L-A-H. And I've got some music coming out. I've been working on some worship music. I'm so excited to release it soon. Um, and so for videos, content, writing, music, all of that stuff, um, Instagram, YouTube, Taylor.com, that's the best place to find me. 
That's awesome. So she doesn't just cast out demons, but she does music <laughs> as well. I actually just found out today you did music. I'm like, wow, she does music. I was looking at your stuff. And so guys, make sure that you check her out on Spotify, Apple, all of that. I put her YouTube in the description and I know like she has her link tree on Instagram, which has all of her links. Support, guys, here's what I'm gonna ask you to do, okay? All of you listening on the replay, support godly ministers. Okay, support, you guys support worldly people all the time. Support what God is doing. Partner with them, sow into them financially, download their music. We're putting all this content out for free and all we're asking you guys to do is watch it and to be a part of it. So please guys, go on her channel, subscribe to her YouTube. Let's let's get her a boost there on YouTube and get her in that algorithm. Check out her TikTok and all of that. Um, we, really, we really appreciate you guys doing that. Is there any events you wanna shout out or anything else that you wanted to mention before I get you off here? Yeah. Um, thanks for saying that on. So if you're in the area, I'm in Nashville every Tuesday night, we have meetings in Nashville. Um, all the information is on my social media, the address, the flyers every Tuesday night, 7 PM. We're seeing radical deliverance, healing miracles every single week. I mean, it's, we just, so we have it in a secular workspace and all the employees in that workspace are now getting saved Come and baptized on. and delivered. And it's just spreading out across the whole city and it's reaching a lot of different cultures too. Too. We've got Hispanic and white and black, and it's beautiful. It's the kingdom of God. And so if you're in driving distance to Nashville, we have service every week. So every week, Tuesday night, seven o'clock. I love the day because we used to have our revival on Tuesday nights at seven, but Tuesday at oh, seven, wow. go check it out in Nashville. Get to one of these in-person meetings, support what God yes. is doing. Uh, I hope a lot of you go. There's about 3000 of you on here. So hopefully a bunch of you guys <laughs> show up in Nashville. We have a lot of people that follow from Nashville because of Pastor Greg Locke's church is there. Make sure you guys check that out. And Taylor, thank you so much for being on. I definitely am going to uh, message you after this to sow into your ministry and I'll, I'll Thank pick you. up an offering for you after I get you off. But thanks so much for being here. And I look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you so much. This was so fun. All right. Have All a right. good night. God bless. Thank you. You too. What an awesome stream, guys. I want you to pray about sowing into this. I want to partner with her. If you're listening on Spotify, Apple, Google, whatever, it's isaiahsaldover.com slash partner. If you're watching live, let me go ahead and find where are my links at? All my links here. I want to sow into her significantly. She has a powerful testimony. I want to sow into her. So help me partner with her. She didn't ask for anything, but when I see people like her that are doing the work that are out here, I want to make sure that we're not just dining and dashing and we're not just bringing people on and not partnering. It takes finances to do everything she's doing, everything I'm doing. We're doing this content for free for you guys. And so if you were blessed tonight, let me know in the comments partner with us financially you can give on my website if you scan the qr code you can give monthly to the website to our ministry you can give one time you can venmo at isaiah saldivar you can zell isaiah luke saldivar at yahoo.com all of the all the info is there so i'm going to sew into her right when we're done and whatever you guys start giving and comes in i'm going to be sending her a portion of that tonight so i'll be trust me i'll be giving her more than than what than what you guys are putting for her on the on the comments you say this is for taylor i'll be giving her above and beyond that i'll be sewing in for my own finances into her as well because i want to make sure we're supporting men and women of god i don't just want to preach oh we need to support ministers i want to practice it so there's your giving links let me read some con some comments here give me one second oh there it is let me take my earphone out it feels good to be back doing the podcast i'll be live friday with my wife so you guys are getting three live streams this week you're getting two podcasts this Tuesday, tonight, you had a podcast. Friday, you get another live podcast with me and my wife. We're going to be doing a Q&A. We have like 40 plus questions, marriage questions, ministry questions. We're going to do a fun little game together, all that. It's going to be a great time in the studio on Friday. Today, just a heads up, we had to get a new or we're getting a new AC in the studio. $11,000. Uh, feels bad. So uh, our AC went out at our new studio. $11,000 for a new studio. So help us out, okay? It all costs money. It all costs money. And there's always just these expenses that come up for doing what we're doing. We have our email list. If you guys don't know, I had a scare last week on Instagram of getting permanently banned, but there's a chance that our, our Facebook is basically one, one thing away from getting permanently banned. I got a strike on my Facebook for praying for the sick. Facebook said, you're not allowed to do that. So they restricted my account and Facebook has told me one more thing you do, we're deleting you permanently. So I have an emergency email list. If you're wondering why is it say emergency email? This emergency email list is very simple. It takes two seconds. All you do is fill out your email. You don't have to put your number if you don't want. You don't have to put your name if you don't want. I'm going to put the link there. You fill out your email on my website, isaiahsalvador.com slash emergency. And God forbid I get banned on all the platforms. 
I will be able to email you. The only way I can stay in touch with you guys is if you fill out this on the emergency email list. Now, if you give through the website, if you monthly partner, I already have your email, but I just want you guys to know that's going to be there. So thank you guys for signing up to that. Just since last night, we had 7,000 people sign up. So that's all it is. You're not going to get an email from me. You're not going to get spammed. It's just the emergency email list is in case I get banned everywhere. I'll be able to reach you. And I'll go either to Rumble or to Kick or to Twitch, wherever. I'll go live stream somewhere else. If they kick me off of these pages, I'll go somewhere else. But I can only contact you through email. I, how else am I going to contact you if I'm off of if I'm banned? Okay. So that's an emergency. Hopefully, we never have to use that email. Okay. The goal is you never get emailed from me through that emergency email list. That's the goal. That's the goal. Okay. Hopefully, you never get an email from me. But God forbid, if you do get an email from me there then that will help us out. And we had 7,000 signups already, so thank you. Thank you, guys. Jim, thank you for the donation. Okay, guys, give, 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 partner, partner. I'm not going to be on here long because my wife made dinner and dinner is done. And so I need to get off here soon, but I want to let the giving load so I can sew into her. So I do need your help. I do need your partnership. If you can't afford to give, don't feel bad, then don't give. If you can afford it, there's a few thousand of you on. If everybody gives a few dollars, you know, we have about less than 1% of people give. If, if everyone gives a few dollars, it'll be more than we need. So thank you. So I can bless her tremendously tonight for her time and for being on. And I, pre I really do appreciate her. I really do appreciate her. What did she cook? She made tacos, smash tacos. I don't know if you guys have heard of those. It's like a new thing. Everybody's making it's all over the internet. They're really, really good. So she made smash tacos. So I'm going to go eat soon. And my stomach is grumbling because I have not ate today and all that stuff. So yes, please add your email. It's not a scam. It's not a fake account. It's me officially. I, it's it's on my website. It's on my official website, isaiahsaldivar.com slash emergency. My mom said, I love you, so I'm so proud. Thank you, mom. I love you too. And thanks for, for making me, mom. I appreciate you. And dad, my dad's in the chat as well. Thank you, dad. Appreciate you as well. Takes two to make a baby. So thank you guys. Smash tacos, uh, look them up. They're really good. They're basically, I think, ground beef, and you smash the ground beef. It's like street tacos, all that. Look it up. It's good. Try it out. It's good. I could stream to my website, but the thing is, while I'm live, I'm getting new people on and reaching new people the whole time. And if I stream to my website, I'll lose that. It'll be just you guys, and we'll never reach new people. So what's your take on Christian metal music? I have no problem with it. I used to be in a metal band, but it wasn't Christian. Yeah, smash tacos. They're really good. Look them up. Look them up. Google them up. What are you and your wife talking about? We're answering questions on Friday. We're answering questions. We're doing a Q&A stream and all that stuff. Yep, got you. Got you guys. It's right there. The link's there. The, the chat's putting all the links out, okay? Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Alexandra. Thank you guys are amazing. All my mods are amazing. How do we give? The link's pinned right there. The link's pinned. I'll, I'll, I'll post the giving links, okay? Here they are. You can give right here. Both the links are there. PayPal and the website. You can scan the QR code. There's like a million ways to give. We try to make it easy. You can literally just put your camera to that QR code and it'll take you to the website. It takes five minutes. Is Carl asleep? No, Carl's awake. I got you. You want to see Carl? I'm just going to let... I'm not going to read all the things tonight. I'll read the Venmo right when I get off just because uh, dinner's waiting. So I won't be reading the Venmo and all that. But thank you, Jim and Anonymous. But I do want to give you guys time because it does take time to load for the giving. Thanks. There's Carl. What an awesome time tonight. Feels good to be doing the podcast again. It's been a while since we did an episode. Your Yakima sermon was fire. Thank you, On Fire Ministries. Are you going to bring on Brian T? Yes. I do plan to bring on Brian T, hopefully in person soon. Okay. I'm so glad you, you didn't adopt the mustache. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. I'm glad that you didn't like it. Yeah, the mustache. Uh, yeah, a lot of people liked it. A lot of people didn't. Surprisingly, a lot of people liked it, but no, I didn't. It was too, no, too much. It's too close. It's too detailed. It's too, yeah, maybe someday. Not now, though. Should have brought Carl to Yakima. Let me see. I have Carl going wild right here. There you go. There's little Carl. Baby Carl right there. Thank you, Woodchucker. How much wood would a Woodchuck chuck if a Woodchuck could chuck wood? I don't know. I don't think Woodchucks chuck wood. I think birds, I don't know. I'm scared. It was bad. All right, I'm glad you didn't like it. I didn't get to see the mustache. Um, I actually have a video of the mustache. You guys want to see it? While you guys give, I'll, I'll play it. Hold on. You can see the mustache. Let me take Carl off the screen. 
give me one second to nerd out real quick. I got to make something happen. Uh, how could I show you guys? Uh, I know how to do it. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Nope, that's not it. Did I delete it? I think I deleted it. Maybe not. Hold on. Let's see. Is it main camera two? Hmm. I don't see it. I think I deleted it. Let me see. Let me see. If it's still here. So you guys can see the mustache. Uh, is it gone? Oh, no, it's still here. Hold on. I think this is it. Let's see. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the... Okay, hold on. Let me do this. Can I make it transform, fit to screen? Okay, here you go. Here's the mustache. But I, sh but I obviously it's gone now, but here you go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the broadcast. I'm excited to be back. With so you. there it is. There's the mustache in all of its glory. Someone said, watch his Mario Brothers once. It's gone now. Anyways. Yeah, I did a little thing where I went under my desk, came back up and it was gone. It was a little editing trick, but yeah, it was fun. It's gone. It was so funny when I went to Yakima, the church, all the staff in the green room, they all bought fake mustaches. So when I walked in, they all had fake mustaches. It was hilarious. Carlos, thank you so much. And Mike, thank you so much for the donation. And I'll read all the donations off stream, okay? Because dinner's ready. I got to get off in a minute. Do you give out your number on YouTube? No, I don't give my phone number out. I did have a beard too, but I didn't film it. I shaved it because it was, it was all itchy and yeah. I didn't like it. Got to keep the clean look, all right? We got to keep the clean look. What a great night tonight, guys. Thank you for sewing, partnering. If you became a monthly partner tonight, pray about doing that. I'll send you an email. You can do that here. We constantly need support because people are constantly uh, canceling their partnership and constantly signing up. So it's a revolving door. So to keep us going, we need your help and we appreciate your help. And I will make sure I sew into Taylor tonight, right when I get off here. So all the links to give are there on the QR code, on the Venmo, on all these websites here. You can give monthly one time. You can join on YouTube. You get 70 sermons, 20% off the merch store if you monthly partner. So thank you for becoming a monthly partner. Talk about, talk about, talk to your wife, talk to your husband about partnering. And, uh, you know, 25 a month, 50 a month, a dollar a month. You could give five cents a month. It doesn't matter. Nothing's too little. Nothing's too big. We appreciate you guys. We love you guys. I'll be live with my wife on Friday at the studio in person. It's going to be a fun time. We're going to try to make her laugh. And we're going to talk about marriage and how we met and answer like a million questions, do live Q&A and all of that. We have it all ready to go. It's a good time. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. And I'll see you guys on Friday night. Of course, we have to play the outro song and all that good stuff. Love you guys. Oh, hey, didn't see you. I was just chilling down there listening. If this, if you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the like button. Super easy, super free, helps a lot. All right, so right now, stop what you're doing, hit like. Okay, I'm going back down here, bye. This is Come Out in Jesus' Name by Jeffrey Jocelyn. Love you guys. There ain't no time to waste. There's power in the blood, and that's never gonna change. Let every tongue confess. And Jesus is the king And one accord we're moving forward Break every chain Demons start to tremble Devils go insane Love you guys, have a good night Thank you for giving and sewing and partnering with us tonight I will be sewing into Taylor tonight Oh, guys, a video just went live on the second channel. Let me post it in the comments. Please, everyone go to the second channel. Let me get the link. Hold on. It's about astral projection. Hold on. All right, everybody go here. Everybody go here. Here we go. Everybody go there. Just posted. Go watch this. Just posted on the second channel.
Everybody go watch on the second channel. Look at that. We're posting videos while we're live. Ladies and gentlemen, we are posting videos while we're live. How incredible is that? Subscribe to the second channel. Everybody go comment that you came from the live stream. There you go. Talking about astral projection in that video there. Go watch, go sub, go comment. Love you guys. Still 1,500 of you on here. Love you guys. We'll see you in the comments of the second channel. Go comment and say, I came from the main channel. And watch it through. Thank you. Subscribe. Thank you. For all my Facebook people. Are you still here? Wait, is Facebook even here? I don't see any Facebook comments. I think Facebook got disconnected. Oh no, there's still some remnant. There's still a remnant on Facebook. It's just not showing up their comments. Oh yeah, Facebook's still there. All right, the remnant's still here. Love you guys. Have a good night. I'll see you guys on Friday night. Goodbye. The link to the second channel is there. It's right there. Just click it. It'll take you to the second channel. Goodbye. Love y'all.